Hello, everyone. I am your host, Navi the Rabi. If you are able to hit a ball, gate ball is a sport for everyone, male or female, tall or short, young or old. The more you know about gate ball, you'll be sure to get hooked on the offensive and defensive techniques and the fun of game strategy. Did you know that gate ball is a game of advanced intelligence strategies? Also, gate ball goes beyond generations and genders. It's a sport to develop teamwork. How great is it when various generations of people can deepen their bonds through team play? Gateball was born in Hokkaido, Japan in 1947. It has become an international game for over 10 million people in over 40 countries. Worldwide, Lots more people are becoming fascinated with gate ball. Come on, now let's play gate ball. Now let me explain the rules of the game. Gate ball consists of two teams of five players, each in head-to-head -head competition. Members take turns to hit the ball and add to the scores. The highest total score decides the winning team. The team hitting first plays the red, odd number. Balls 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And the team hitting later plays the white, even number. Balls 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Each player is given their own number and play in number order. The inner field of a court is 15 meter wide by 20 meter long. There are gates 1, 2, and 3 with a goal pole in the center. Each player follows the route as shown passing their own ball through first, second, and third gates to hit the goal pole to finish. Going through a gate scores one point, and hitting the goal pole scores two points. So a total of five points is the maximum score for a single player. When every player of either team finishes consecutively, it's a total of 25 points. This is called a perfect game. It's a win when either team scores 25 points and the other team can't catch up on its next turn. If the other team does catch up on the next turn, it's a draw. When the playing time exceeds 30 minutes and both teams cannot finish, the team with the highest total score wins. What makes skate ball more interesting is the rule of continuous play. When players meet a certain requirement, they are able to stroke more than once, so leading them to a more strategic position. One requirement is passing a gate. When a player succeeds in passing a gate, an additional stroke is given. Another is to touch another ball with your ball. When a player succeeds in touching another ball, they are allowed to take a spark. That is, to hit your own ball in contact with the touched ball while underneath your foot. When a spark is successful, the player may take another stroke. When your own ball or others go out of inside line after normal stroking or sparking, 
that ball is considered an out ball. The player is only allowed to hit it back into bounds on their next turn. If you pass a gate or hit the goal pole from the outer field, the score will not count. Now that you know the rules, you're already a gate ball player. Now, let's play gate ball! The most fundamental thing in gate ball is stroking. Here we feature some of the stroking techniques to help improve your skills. To stroke the ball, we use a special stick made for gate ball. The materials are either wood or metal. You can choose from what suits you the best. Excluding sparking, there are two basic forms of stroking. One is to stroke the ball from the side, just like putting in golf. In Japan, the birthplace of gate ball, this swing is the most popular. In recent years, Players in many countries have started to stroke the ball in the center by swinging the stick between the legs. Consider the style that suits you best so you can control the ball and its momentum. Among the stroking techniques, the touch and sparking are both important as they allow you to continue the play. Let's learn two basic techniques in the touch. One is to stop your ball as it touches the other ball, called a frontal touch. This is to touch near the center of the other ball. Another method is to change the direction of your ball after striking the other ball, called a slide touch. Touching a little to the side of the ball you are aiming at, it is possible to send your ball closer to a gate by using this method. Please think over which touch play would be most effective for your next play. If the other ball you touch goes out of bounds, the play will not count. Let's get used to stroking your own ball with the various strength and angles which will affect it. When players succeed in a touch, they acquire the right to spark. This will enable the player to block an opponent's play or help people on their side leading to different strategies. The way to spark is to pick up the ball you have touched, step on your own ball, and place the touched ball next to your own ball so they are in contact with each other. Then hitting your own ball, so make the other ball move away in the direction you have chosen. I hope you now understand the basic techniques of stroking, touch play, and sparking. Next chapter, we will be focusing on more strategic stroking techniques to take control of the game. Now, let's play gate ball! Gate ball is a sport everyone can play in a very friendly manner. At the same time, it is a very advanced mental sport using many intelligent strategies. You will be blocked by the opponents if you simply aim at the goal pole. You will never win. To win, you have to be aware of what's happening on the court, using both offense and defense to cooperate with your teammates. Here we will be looking at some of the plays representing coalition plays.
like this ball position, next is the red one's turn to stroke. When there is no interruption from right two, red one will aim between red three and red five to let red three have an easy play on its next turn. On the red three's next play, it will be easy to touch red one and continue to sparking. It will also lead to a high possibility of touching red five. Like this, by the non-scoring play of red one, the red team will be able to play continuously and take control of the game. Next is the technique of how your team could gain influence around the gate. The player of red one knows white two will not interrupt, so first touches red five. Then a spark will send red five closer to the position of red three. Red one will continue play and move itself to red three and red five, making three red balls gathered around the gate. This means a higher possibility of the red team making multiple scores, and at the same time, preventing the white team from scoring. Next is how to work together to block the opponent. When there's no interruption from white two, red one will touch red three. By sparking, Red 3 will move closer to white 4. Then red 1 will continue play and be moved near to red 3. At the red 3's turn, it will be easy to make a touch leading to a spark to make white 4 an out ball. Lastly, let's go over the technique of pass touch, touch pass. A pass touch or a touch pass is to cross the gate as well as succeeding a touch with one play. If the player succeeds, the player is allowed to continue to play twice more, leading to a great advantage for the team. For example, like in this position, red one, and Red 3 will move inside the shaded area behind the gate to assist Red 5. This will allow Red 5 a pass touch, which will bring two consecutive plays giving the Red team a big chance. As you have seen in gate ball, sometimes sacrificing an own ball sometimes assisting other balls of your team, and sometimes interrupting an opponent, the team needs to come up with strategic solutions. It is truly an intellectual team sport. Now let's watch how the real game goes. First, Players from 1 to 10 aim at the first gate in numerical order. Players who pass the first gate are allowed to continue the play. It's the second play of red 1. Passing the second gate, achieving the additional play. Also succeeded in touching red 3 
giving Red 1 another additional play. Now it's the sparking to make Red 3 get closer to the opponent's ball. It makes it a lot easier for Red 3 to complete a touch on its next turn. Red 1 slide touches Red 5 using the additional shot. Sparking will take Red 5 to the front of Gate 3. Red 1 passes through Gate 3. Using the additional shot, Red 1 will take a position behind Gate 3. It will now be possible for Red 5 to pass and touch. Next up is Red 5, which succeeds with a pass and touch. The great cooperation of the Red Team is leading the game at the early stages. Let's take a look at the Revenge of White 10. Passing Gate 2 and stopping just by the line makes the next play possible to aim the opponent. Wonderfully, it touches Red 5. An extra play is granted. Shooting Red 5 out of bounds by sparking, it also succeeds in a touch on Red 3. Hits Red 3 out of bounds, then touches White 8. Next by sparking, takes White 8 closer to Red 9. Touches Red 1 using the extra play, and by sparking, hits Red 1 out of bounds. At this point, the Red Team leads by 3 points. Great plays by White 10, forcing 3 Red Balls out of bounds, has brought White Team back into the game. 6 minutes are remaining in the game. The Red Team really wants to get away and Red 1's turn. Desperately wanting to succeed this touch. Oh, too bad. The game is now in a state of confusion. The remaining time is 2 minutes. The red team leads 10 to 8. It's now the turn of white 10. Sparking has made white 6 go through gate 3. Now they are down by 1 point. Then white 10 hits 2 opponents fall out of bounds and succeeds in pass touch. It is now a tied score. Two extra plays are granted. White 10 aims at the goal pole, but White 10 still has a play remaining. And there's a goal! Adding two more scores on the board, taking over the game. Now 30 minutes of competition time has passed. After the final shot of White 2, this game will be over. The final result is 13 to 10. It was a great upset victory over the white team. Hope you enjoyed Gate Ball. Next is your turn to play. Let's play Gate Ball!